morning and welcome back to Inside Tech Soma. Right now I'm joined by Jessica Herbert and Jody Dees from the Guardians of Children organization. Now Jody, tell us a little bit about how you got to know Jessica. Well, back in July we had our national convention up in Arkansas. And when we were talking about coming on the show, I was like, you know, I would really love to have a little guardian that has transferred into a patched member. And when we were sitting there and we were talking about it, and we were like, okay, so who could, who, you know, who could we use? And someone had mentioned Mermaid. And I was like, oh, my goodness, that is that gorgeous little girl <laughs> with all of the hair from Nationals. Absolutely. So that's when I contacted her dad and asked if she would mind to come up because she is actually from Lubbock. And so I wanted everyone in Wichita Falls to see, to see her and to see how fabulous she is. So Jessica, tell us a little bit about your personal story here. I know it, it affected you very deeply, this organization. Well, I became a guardian not only to protect the children, but to raise awareness of what children are going through and what I have gone through. Because I too, like when I was little, I was abused. And this club just reminded me of how much other kids need the support and just someone that can just be there for them. And so you were in foster care, is that right? Is that how yes. you first got introduced to the Guardians mm -hmm. organization? Well, I was, that was before. Okay. This, um, I was in foster care for one year, and my parents that I have now, who I refer to as my only parents, <laughs> they adopted me a year later, and whenever I was, 15, my dad, he started um, getting introduced into the Guardians, and I've been around them for a while, and then as I was turning 16, 17, around that, those ages, I became more and more interested, so then I started talking to my dad about being a prospect, and when I turned 18 and becoming a member, and I did when I was 18. And now we heard the term Lil Guardian. Explain to us how that worked before you became a full-fledged member. Well, a Lil Guardian, they go to the events just like anybody else. They participate in a lot of the stuff that we do. And now you're the full-fledged member yes. when you're 18, correct? Yes. You start prospecting when you're 18. And you have to, the minimum is six months to a year to become... Um, a member that's like that's what we do and having such a personal connection I know you didn't get involved with the organization until after you were adopted and your father kind of introduced you um, but what would it have meant to you I mean going through something like that to have this organization come and help you yes it would have helped if when I was younger because there is a lot of stuff that happened to me that I don't remember because I blocked it out mm -hmm. and like I don't, it would have helped. Absolutely. I'm sure a lot of kids feel the same way. I do want to talk about how you got your road name, Mermaid, once you did get involved and once the organization was a part of your life. Tell us why you are Mermaid. The reason my road name is Mermaid is because I have a deep love of the ocean. And since I, ever since I was little up to now, I've had a fascination in mermaids. And that kind of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, of course, very interesting. So we have Glitter and Mermaid. And I know you want to talk a little bit about how the adoption ceremony works. I know you kind of had a ceremony. Tell us how that works. Well, the, once the, the guardian or the, the person, sometimes the parent, once they reach out to our organization and they go through all of the particulars to make sure that they are in need of us, we set up our adoption ceremony. And it is actually something that is quite amazing. My very first adoption was, um, it was very moving because the, the little girl that one of our other chapters had adopted, she, we went, were at a park and when all of the bikes pulled into the park, you could see them over in the pavilion and you could see how guarded she was and even her whole family, how guarded they were. Mm -hmm and the bikes pull up and they just rev the engines and then we all get off of the bikes and 
we have a bear, sometimes it's a cat, depending upon the kid, and we give it all kinds of hugs. It goes from each member, and we fill it up with hugs, and when we present that to the child, we tell them if it runs out of hugs, you let us know, and we'll come back and fill it up. And that's, that was such an amazing time because you could see the young girl and even her family just open up so much and just have those few moments of no fear. Mm -hmm. And that's why, to me, it's so important for our little guardians to transfer over into patched members because what Mermaid does remember, she's going to be able to help any children who have gone through what she's gone through. Mm -hmm. And that's why she is so special and so important to us. Of course. Well, Mermaid, is there anything else you'd like to add that you want people to know about the organization? Being a guardian isn't about wearing the leather or having the, the motorcycle. It's more than that. It's to be there for the children, to protect the children, to make them feel like they are, like they are wanted. Great, great message. Thank you guys for talking to us. We are not done yet. Stick around to Inside Tech Summer. We're going to talk even more about the Guardians of the Children organization and more about how you can support them. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Inside Tech Selma. We've been talking about the Guardians of Children organization. Right now we're going to take you out to San Antonio to talk to one of the founders, Ruben Cano, better known as Bam Bam. So let's talk a little bit to him. Well, we founded Guardians of the Children in late 2005. We were about pretty close to 80 members who were part of another organization. And uh, we worked a lot with children, you know, after the abuse. Had, and so we saw a need to work with the community before the fact to educate and, you know, educate the community on child abuse prevention. And so in 2006, early 2006, uh, we decided to just form up. Guardians of the Children. I imagine to do that, this must have become a real passion for you. I mean, why was it so important for you to raise this awareness and to help the children in this way? Well, uh, here in Bear County, in San Antonio, Texas, it, it seemed to us that bringing awareness and education to the community was, it just seemed to have an effect on the community. It really drew crowds wherever we were at, talking to people about child abuse prevention and things of that nature, and we just became very passionate about it. We've been talking to the local chapter here in Wichita Falls, and I'm just curious what it's been like for you to see the organization grow and to see all these local chapters kind of pop up. Um, you know, across the state and across across the country. Yeah, we have a uh, right now. We have 29 chapters, uh, active chapters in the United States, and one in Canada. And then we've got another three chapters coming on board within the next month. And uh, be quite honest, I <laughs> when we started uh, Guardians of the Children back in 2006, we never once imagined that we would have another chapter anywhere. And here we are with 30 plus. So yeah, it's it's. Any goals for the future, um, you know, looking ahead, what you'd like to see the organization do next? Well, uh, we still like doing what we're doing. Um, we still like bringing awareness to the community, uh, working with the children, uh, being referred children through uh, child advocacy agencies. Uh, we like empowering these children. I mean, there's just, there's just so many benefits to that, uh, see these children smile again. I don't know if you're familiar with... Uh, the method we use to empower these children, but we use what I refer to as the motorcycle persona. You get a bunch of bikers together and you uh, introduce yourself to a child and you let that child know that from, from here on, you know, we're on their side and uh, that's just empowering. Absolutely. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add that you'd like the community to know? Well, um, we are a 501c3 organization. Uh, our chapters do have events throughout uh, throughout the year where they'll try to raise funds and uh, these funds do go to help these families, you know, these children that are referred to us uh, and when I say help, it, it goes to help uh, with whatever their needs may be uh, depending on their circumstances uh, if they're going through some hard times uh, these funds will will be uh, used to help support those families during those hard times so uh, it helps uh, in any way possible. We have no limits as to what we can do and what we are allowed to do to help these children and their families. 
Thank you, Ruben. And back on the local front, if you do want to get involved, there's a fundraiser coming up on October 11th. Tell us what we need to know. Yes, there is. Uh, Red River Harley has been very gracious to let us come do a hot dog burn. It is a lot of fun. They have Winthor sausage rolled in tortillas. It's on donation basis. Absolutely give what your heart tells you to give and come out to Harley, spend some time with us. Let us talk to you. Tell us, we can tell you about the organization and, and it's just, it's a fun time. And now it's October 11th. Is there a time frame in there? We usually start about 1030. Isn't it's it 1030, about 1030. It's usually 1030 till about two o'clock in the afternoon. And you're really <clears throat> opening it up to anyone who wants to come out and learn about the organization. Is that yes. right? Absolutely. And if anybody would like to make any donations to us, we are a 501c3 uh, nonprofit. So any donations that anybody would care to make are tax deductible. Let's talk a little bit more about donations and contact information. If somebody wants to get more information about your organization, how can they find you? The first place that they can find us is go to our national website. It's www.guardiansofthechildren.com. Okay, and I know locally you have a Facebook page, is that correct? Yes, we do. Or Falls Town, Guard, uh, yeah. Falls Town Guardians of the Children uh, public page. Okay, so you can find more information about the organization. And are there contact numbers on that page, contact numbers you would like to give now for people who want more information? Uh, the contact numbers are on the national website. Well, overall, just wrap it up for us. Tell us why people you know, should want to know more about your organization. We're here for the children. If any child needs help, we're more, we're more, we're more than happy to step up and help them any way we can. You guys do a lot of great work in the community. We certainly hope a lot more children are helped. I know they will be, and we hope you get a lot of support as far as members and donations. We hope everybody makes it out on October 11th. Thank you. Thank you. And if anyone does know any child abuse happening, report it. Don't, don't stand by. Mm -hmm. And that's one of our things that in Guardians of the Children is don't let your silence drown out their cries. Report something, even if it's just the tiniest thing. Just report it. That is a great point. Thank you guys so much for coming on Inside Texoma to share your work and to share some personal stories. I know it's been very moving. Yes, it has. Thank you so much, and thank you thank for you. watching Inside Texoma. We're really happy that you joined us this morning.